The psalmist said, I called you and you answered me. And the apostle Paul wrote, in everything, in every situation, by prayer and petition, present your request to God. So we're talking this morning about prayer. The meaning and the purpose and the power of prayer. So let me share five insights. First of all, prayer is the primary connection to God. Prayer is our primary connection to God. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, once said, and I love this quote, prayer is the grand connection to God. Underline the. Prayer is the grand connection to God. I think all of you know that Jesus had an extraordinary relationship with the Father. And most people would say, well, of course he had a, an extraordinary relationship with God because he was the Son of God. But I'm firmly convinced that the reason Jesus had such a strong relationship with God was his prayer life. I believe Jesus was intimate with God, and God was intimate with Jesus in a special way because of the times, the countless times that Jesus spent with God in prayer. I mean, read through the Gospels. And you find innumerable occasions where Jesus goes off to pray. There's the time he goes up on a mountainside to pray. There's the occasions when he pulls apart from the crowd and either goes up on a mountain or crosses a lake so that he can, can get apart from the crowd and, and he can pray. There's Matthew's occasion when he went up on a mountainside and he prayed all night long before he chose the disciples. All night long. But my favorite is here in Mark 1. Where Mark writes that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, he left the house, and he went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And he prayed so long that Simon gets worried about where he is. And he and others come looking for Jesus because he's spending so much time in prayer. Prayer is our primary connection to God. Every one of us wants a close relationship with God. Every one of us wants a personal relationship with God. Every one of us wants, to some extent, a more intimate relationship with God. And friends, listen to me. That's not going to happen without prayer. Let me tell you two things that happen in a dedicated, disciplined prayer life. First of all, we get more of God. I've said it often, and I fully believe it. The more time you spend with God in prayer, the more of God you get. The more time you spend in prayer the more of God you get. And secondly, your relationship with God does become more personal and more intimate. The more time you spend with God and let Him spend with you in prayer, the more personal that relationship. That's the first insight. Prayer is our primary connection to God. Secondly, conversational prayer can make a difference. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I used to look down on what we call conversational prayer. Conversational prayer essentially uh, uh, encompasses brief, often hurried prayers. I call to them snippets. In other words, I'm in a rush. Life is hurried. I'm too busy to spend dedicated and disciplined time with God, so I get off a prayer while I'm in the car. I get off a prayer while I'm rushing into the store. I get off a prayer while I'm in the parking lot. I get off a prayer while I'm going into work. I just get off a snippet of a prayer because I'm too busy to stop and pray. So I'm being honest, I used to look down on snippet prayers. But I've come to realize those prayers can be very meaningful. I said last week that when I feel worry creeping into my spirit, that I pray a simple prayer. I pray, Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me strength. Lord, help me trust you. That's what I call a snippet prayer. Lord, give me wisdom. Lord, give me strength. Lord, help me trust you. That's a conversational prayer. It's a brief prayer. It can be hurried, but it can be sincere and serious. There's another prayer that I pray every day, several times a day, and it's this. God, give me wisdom. God, give me strength. God, give me patience. God, help me serve. Now, when I pray those prayers, I mean them. When I pray them, I'm intentional that I'm talking to God. 
When I pray them, I'm not just doing it because I'm in a hurry. I'm doing it because I want that prayer to be a connection with God in a hurried moment. Every Sunday morning before I come into this sanctuary for our worship services, I, I pray a prayer from the, from the hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. I pray this. I'm in my office, and I hold up my arms, and I say, Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. So those prayers can be most meaningful. But now listen to me. If that's the only prayer life you've got, and if that's the only prayer life I've got, our prayer life is in trouble. I mean, what kind of marriage would you have if the only conversation you ever had with your husband or wife was infrequent and hurried? And what kind of parents would you be? And what kind of parenting would go on in the home if you parents only had conversation with your children infrequently and hurriedly? How about friendship? How can you maintain any friendship if you are infrequently in touch and you are only hurriedly in touch? So I believe in conversational prayer. I believe there are prayers that you and I can pray every day that are simple, that can be repeated, that can be meaningful. But I do want us to understand that that cannot be the totality of our prayer life. The third insight is this. Prayer is not unchecked uh, promise from God. Prayer is not unchecked promise from God. One of my favorite cartoons is the, the one where a little boy is on his knees, and it's obvious that he's in prayer beside the bed, and he's looking upward as he prays, and he says these words, Aunt Stella isn't married yet. Uncle Herbert hasn't gotten a job yet. And Daddy's hair is still falling out. I'm tired of praying for this family and getting no results. <laughs> well, you've had those moments. I've had those moments. You've prayed prayers that you felt no answer came. I've prayed prayers that I felt no answer came. Or we've prayed prayers where the answer that came wasn't what we wanted. Every one of us has the experience of knowing what it's like to feel that our prayers aren't being heard or aren't being answered. Let me tell you something, and you know this. You're mature people. You're mature Christians. You know this. God does not promise you, and God does not promise me that he is going to answer our prayers the way we pray them or in the timeline that we seek. One Christian thinker put it rather simply when he said there are four ways that God answers our prayers. He may say yes. He may say no. He may say, not yet, or he may say, I've got a better plan. I like that. God may say yes to your prayers. God may say no to your prayers and mine. God may say to us when we pray, not yet. Or God may say, honestly, friend, I've got a better plan, and you'll have to wait. But let me tell you what God will always give you and what God will always give me in our prayer time, and that is himself. You can be assured, and I can be assured, that whatever prayer we pray for whatever need in our lives, for whatever circumstance in our lives, that at the very least, God will give us himself. And in the end, do you need more and do I need more? One of my favorite verses in all of the Bible is Isaiah 40. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wind, wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait upon God, who let God be God, shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be, be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In other words, while I'm waiting on God to give me the answer to that prayer, I'm thankful he gives me himself so I can get on. Which leads, however, to the fourth insight. Prayer can be communication with God in tough times. Prayer can be communication with God in tough times. I mentioned before Ann Voskamp, the evangelical thinker and blogger. I mentioned her a few weeks ago. She wrote a book called A Thousand Gifts. I mentioned that book. 
In that book, she tells about the death of her uh, elementary age sister, her older sister. Anne was four at the time. Her sister was just a little bit older than she was, and she was run over by a milk truck on the farm where they lived. And Anne writes in her book about that experience. She had only toddled into the farm lane, one after a cat, and I can see the delivery truck driver sitting at the kitchen table, his head in his hands, and I remember how he sobbed that he had never seen the little girl. I can still hear my mother's witnessing scream, see my father's eyes shot white through. Really, when you bury a child, or when you just simply get up every morning and live life raw, you murmur, murmur soundlessly, can there be a good God? A God who graces with good gifts when a crib lies empty through long nights and bugs burr through coffins? Where is God, really? How can he be good when babies die and marriages implode and dreams blow away dust to the wind? Where is grace bestowed when cancer gnaws and loneliness aches? This is the question of all questions, isn't it? Where is our supposedly good God? There are times that we don't feel like praying. Life is too rough. It's too raw, as Ann Voskamp writes. And we don't have the words for God. And we don't feel like talking to God because we have just been through a truly horrific, tragic moment in life. And the last thing we feel like doing is talking to the God whom we don't understand. We're looking for a good God, and we wonder where that good God is because of the tragedy in which we find ourselves. Let me tell you something. God's okay with that. But what I would say to you is, at least fuss at God. At least talk to Him. If you're going through a moment where the rawness of life is so real that you don't feel like you can pray what you would consider a prayer, then just talk to God even if you do nothing but fuss at God. He can handle it like any divine parent. I know a woman who lost their first child born prematurely at six months. She was a member of my church. After she began to heal physically, she made her way back to the church, and she was very honest with me. She wasn't there for worship. She wasn't there for my preaching, and she wasn't there for God. She said, I'm coming back to sing in the choir because I'm thankful for Dan, who was the choir leader, and I'm thankful for how much these people love me. And this is some weeks after she's come back, and she said, I'm going to be honest with you, preacher. She said, when I'm sitting in that choir loft, I'm fussing at God. I'm complaining to God that he let this happen in my life. I'm complaining to God that we lost our first child born prematurely at six months, and I don't understand why. And all I can say to God is, I don't get it. It's not right. You're not good. I'm having trouble. And she said, I'd spend that whole worship time, once the anthem was over, just fussing at God. And you know what happened? The lines of communication stayed open. And the God to whom she turned kept reaching. And the God with whom she was angry kept loving. And the God whom she couldn't stand kept answering. And over time, sitting in worship Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, railing against God and pointing her finger at Metaphorically, at God, she came back to God because she kept the lines of communication open. Listen to me, God can, you've heard me say this before, God can handle your questions, and God can handle your fussing, and God can handle your complaining. But we need to keep the lines open so we can receive from Him while we're fussing and be renewed. Final thing about prayer is intercessory prayer matters. You know what intercessory prayer is, don't you? It's praying for another person, interceding on behalf of another person who has a particular need in life. Intercessory prayer matters. Here's my definition of intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is like an electrical current. If you go over and you flip the switch, 
then an electrical current is going to go over to some spot and it is going to have impact on that spot. For example, turn a light bulb on or a lamp on or the lights on. You flip the switch and the electrical current goes and it has impact over there. That's what intercessory prayer is. Intercessory prayer is you flipping the switch of love and concern and care for another person who is over here in need and God taking that love and that care and that concern and literally carrying it over to that person and implanting it into his and her heart and spirit. That means that every prayer you pray for another person has literal impact. Why do you think people say, I felt that prayer? You say to somebody, I was really praying for you. What do they say? I felt your prayers. They felt the prayers. Because your prayers and my prayers are carried by God to that person in need to impact that person with love and care and concern. Maybe the person doesn't get what the person wants, but the person gets you and your love and your care and your concern, and God takes it. So guess what? The more people that are praying, the more God carries into the heart and life of another person. Wow. Every prayer you pray, every prayer we pray, for another person is literally a gift into their lives by the Spirit of God. Thus, listen very carefully, when we don't pray for them, we withhold from them something that they need. Do not take lightly for one moment the power of your intercessory prayers. So the psalmist said, I called, and you answered. And Paul said, in every situation, good and bad, bring your prayers and your petitions to God. So what can we believe about prayer? It is the primary connection to God we have. It is the way you and I can have an intimate, personal relationship with God and own some conversational prayer have some prayers that seem simple and maybe hurried but when offered sincerely are true prayer but don't expect God to promise you or promise me that he's going to answer our prayers the way we want or in the timeline we seek. But what he will always give us is himself. And if life is so rough that you can't talk to God or don't feel like praying, then just be honest. Let him know how you feel. He loves us. And he wants the lines of communication open. And take to heart the difference your prayers, your intercessory prayers make for other people. Thanks be to God for the gift, the power, the purpose of prayer. Amen.